Here's me with, with Manson. Uh, th this gentleman right here is Anthony uh, Shore. He was recently executed by the state of Texas. Directly beneath him is Christopher Wilkins. William Harder's home is filled with photographs of men and women he calls friends. But to others, they're icons of evil in dark parts of American history. No, I want to go and sit down with the person who, you know, really did, you know, has done all this and, and lived it and hear what they have to say. I don't want to you know, an, an author's interpretation. His story starts 18 years ago when he came across Richard Ramirez artwork online. Ramirez is otherwise known as the Night Stalker. He was a convicted serial killer and raped and tortured more than a dozen people in California in the mid 80s. I then decided to find Richard Ramirez's address on death row in California and uh, it took a while, but I found it and I wrote him a letter and sure enough, he wrote back. They struck up a friendship, and that's when Harder started to become a regular visitor for years at San Quentin State Prison. When I got out of the prison, I said it was him, and it was really him. So it was like looking at a, a poisonous snake in a way. This is somebody who killed people, you know, tortured people recreationally. Harder then started his mission to reach out to other inmates, one of them being the infamous Charles Manson. Sometimes it's hard to hold back excitement. I mean, obviously when you're, um, Meeting somebody like uh, Manson or Ramirez, it, it's exciting. I took more from my visit with Manson than any other uh, inmate I've met. And Harder became extremely close to convicted serial killer Dorothea Puente. She ran a boarding house in Sacramento and killed her elderly boarders before cashing their social security checks. She was charged with nine murders, convicted of three, and sentenced to two life sentences. I came somewhat of a, a grandson figure, if you will. And, and as our relationship progressed, um, for legal purposes, I became her grandson. Harder says he sat with her for hours a day while she was in hospice care before she passed. Now he has her with him in his home. This, of course, is um, Miss Dorothea. I like to think of her as just kind of watching over. Throughout his journey, he's visited prisons in four different states, three different death rows, and more than 90 convicted murderers. Witness subpoena is signed by Theodore Robert Bundy. And his house is proof of this. It's become a makeshift murderabilia museum. Almost every cabinet and wall is lined with the artwork created by inmates. Piece right here is done by Charles Manson. It's, uh, he sat and looked at the sun and tried to draw it. This right here is a self-portrait from uh, Yosemite decapitation killer, Kerry Stainer. Um, it's, it's really, uh, his artwork and his style is really unique. And this right here is a prescription bottle of one of Dr. Kevorkian's blood pressure medications. It's not something you can buy at Walmart. It's not something you see. And some of the paintings he's personally requested. It, we went rounds. He did not want to do it, but I got him to do it. This is by California freeway killer Bill Bonin. He and a partner have also created serial killer bobbleheads and have just been inducted into the Bobblehead Hall of Fame in Wisconsin. We sell more Hitlers and cannot believe how many we've sold. And to share his passion with others, he's created the website murderauction.com where people can list, buy, or bid on items like artwork or letters from inmates. He says none of the inmates receive any profits, but it doesn't stop victims, advocates, and families from fighting against him. Couldn't imagine having somebody, you know, rape and murder my mother or my wife or the children I don't have. I imagine it would be extremely traumatizing and, and, it, and it sucks, but, but guess what? Your rights end where mine begin. But Harder says the main reason he got into this, believe it or not, was to help people. They were born into, you know, terrible life circumstances. And not saying that everybody who's born into terrible life circumstances goes out and, and commits crimes, but some do. And some of these, you know, people were brought up, brought up in the system. I try to be a little bit of a, as silly as it's going to sound, a little ray of sunshine. I mean, prison sucks and he hopes he can provide some peace for these convicted killers in the last years of their life. I've got a good life, and I've had a good life, and I, and I want to be able to give back just a little. Bailey Miller, CBS 47 Eyewitness News.